Hello lovers of chemistry, it's Chemigator, welcome back to my channel. In ID28, Otto Dilt and Kurt Aller introduced a powerful strategy for constructing two carbon-carbon bonds at the same time while forming a six-membered ring. For its groundbreaking discovery, they were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1950. The dilt aller reaction allows organic chemists to create six-membered ring with high control over ratio and stereoselectivity. In this reaction, a total of six pi electrons participate in the transition state to form the cyclic product. But what about higher order cycloadditions? Is it possible to create seven, eight, or even nine-membered ring through cycloaddition reactions? The answer is yes. In 1965, Hoffman and Woodward classified these reactions based on their electronic characteristics, opening the door for expanding the scope beyond six electron processes. Shortly after, Woodward proposed that Hooke should explore the 6 plus 4 cycloaddition of cyclopentadiene with cycloheptatriene, an idea that helped establish the concept of higher order cycloadditions. In this episode, I'm gonna discuss the rare and complex 12 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction, so let's jump right into it. In 2021, Anker Jorgensen's lab introduced the first enantioselective example of a 12 plus 2 cycloaddition using an organocatalyst to achieve the cycle 3 2 2 azine core. Let's take a look at the 3D model of the final product. In this complex architecture, three cyclic rings are joined together by a nitrogen atom. As you can see, these two hydrogen atoms are in a trans configuration. The role of the organocatalyst is to ensure their trans stereoselectivity. Cyclic structures containing ring junction nitrogen atoms are prevalent in alkaloids such as velocilamine A and myrmicrine. Producing such complex scaffold is a significant challenge using traditional methods. However, this intricate structure was successfully synthesized through a higher order cycloaddition in just one step. Now let's go through the mechanism. It's apparent that in this reaction, a 12 component should join with a 2 component to create a larger ring. For this to happen, they first need to be activated. As you can see, there is an aldehyde group in the exo position of the 12 pi component. For activation, the amino catalyst attacks the aldehyde moiety, forming an iminium ion intermediate. After that, it is transformed into an enamine by shifting the positions of the pi bonds. Now, our 12 component is activated for the cycloaddition reaction. This strategy is called vanilligous aminocatalysis, which allows the generation of reactive polyends by deprotonation of analyzable aldehydes at remote positions. In classic examples, if we want to carry out an allo reaction, we can use secondary amines to produce the corresponding enamine. After that, the alpha position of the aldehyde is activated for nucleophilic attack on the electrophile, and the aldehyde functional group can be unmasked by hydrolysis. The beauty of vanilligous aminocatalysis is that it enables us to extend beyond the alpha position, allowing the reaction to occur at more distance position relative to the aldehyde group. To achieve such remote functionalization, we need a pi extended system, just like in our case, where pi orbitals extend throughout the molecule, making through chain communication possible. Just like the 12 component, the 2 component is activated by the aminocatalyst leading to the formation of an iminium ion. Notice that in this compound, the iminium ion acts as an electron withdrawing group, setting the stage for the nucleophilic attack by the 12 components. The first step of the cycloaddition reaction begins with the electronic transmission of pi electrons in the 12 pi system, allowing it to attack the two components from this carbon atom. At this step, the enamine moiety in the 12 component is converted into an iminium ion, while in the 2 component, the iminium ion transforms into an enamine functional group, essentially the opposite of the previous step. As a result, the newly formed enamine triggers the nucleophilic attack of the 2 component onto the iminium ion, facilitating ring closure and yielding the cyclized product. Now let's take a deep dive into enantioselectivity. Coupling of two components introduces two new chiral centers in the molecule. As a result, there are four stereoisomers. 
Calculations indicate that the trans product is more stable than the cis conformation. But, among the two possible trans conformations, one is more stable than the other. Here, I gonna break down the reason behind this stereoselectivity. In this reaction, the choice of the R group in the organocatalyst plays a crucial role in stereoselectivity by shielding one phase of the 12 components. In other words, chirality is induced by the esteric hindrance of the bulky substituents. Now let's explore the first step of the cyclization process. On the left side, the transition state shows that the 12 component attacks the upper phase of the two components. On the right side, the situation is reversed with the nucleophile attacking the lower phase of the two components. Calculations indicate that this transition state is more stable, resulting in an SS configuration in the final product. However, this result contradicts the experimental outcome where the RR configuration is the major product. This suggests that another factor must be influencing the reaction pathway. Now let's examine the second step. As you can see, bulky substituents come closer together due to the formation of the new bond in the previous step. The rigidity of this structure prevents free rotation. Looking at the transition state that leads to the SS configuration, there is significant strict hindrance between the phenyl groups, destabilizing the transition state. In contrast, another conformation avoids this strict clash between substituents. This suggests that the second step of cyclization is more influential than the first step. Although the initial transition state appears more stable, the second step ultimately determines the reaction pathway, leading to the RR product.